Welcome back to the Skymaster F-18 build assembly series. Uh, this is video number 14 in the series. A lot of videos in this series, but we got a lot to do still. So in the last video, the entire back end is complete and we are basically ready to, uh, pretty much ready to join the front end of this, uh, of this aircraft. So I may be doing that, uh, first thing in this video and then kind of doing some uh, planning and prep work after that we'll see how it goes but uh, that's kind of where we're at so if this is your first time finding my channel guys don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any content that I release don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments list them down below or shoot me an email and I will happily get in touch with you so without further ado guys let's hop in well, just temporarily bolted the front end on, and uh, that makes this plane much bigger. <laughs> a lot bigger now. That's pretty uh, pretty wild. So the front end, it's actually quite surprising. It weighs like it feels like it weighs next to nothing. Like the land, if, if the landing gear was out, this piece would be incredibly light. Um, it's very, very surprising. So, um, okay. So the reason I just temporarily bolted it together was just to see, look at that mess of wires, just to see what, um, what our access would be and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So, um, I do need to build a platform for the smoke tank, which that would be okay. But, uh, I do have to put, um, the lines on the uh, the main tank that are going to feed the UATs, so I have to do that. I've also w with the the fuselage split, I've also got to get the uh, the canopy working as well too. So that's probably what I'm gonna gonna get uh, completed before I um, bolt this together. So I'm gonna I think in this video I'm gonna be working primarily on the uh, the canopy and uh, getting that figured out before we can uh, go any further. So anyways, guys, I'm going to do a little bit of planning here, a little bit of figuring out, and I will chime in uh, with my next step here. All right, guys, so this canopy should be a pretty fun puzzle. Um, so just if you're not familiar with the way this canopy works, so it's got a lock mechanism that's here, and what that does, I'll show you, but it lifts the back of the canopy up, which pulls the back or pulls the front end back, and disengages the front pins. So, canopy lock comes up, and then the actuating mechanism, which is visible in there, actually opens the canopy. So, hopefully I can do this one-handed. So there's the, the canopy lock itself. So when that is engaged all the way, you can see it disconnect at the front there, and then, the canopy is allowed to open to about, well, we'll see how far, how much travel we can get out of it, but canopy opens and then canopy closes. Now this is where things get interesting because they've got these tabs built into the canopy. Okay, you can see them there, one, two, three. So there's a fair bit of room on those tabs. Um, as far as spacing goes. Now this is the rear cockpit. We're gonna actually put a piece of wood on the bottom here to add a little bit more thickness and strength. But basically those canopy latches need to line up nicely so it engages all by itself as well too. So if it's uh, if the hole's too narrow, there's a chance that as that latch comes down, it'll hit the actual can or the, the cockpit and won't go in its hole. If it's too wide, uh, that could be an issue as well too. So we have a bit of a puzzle, a bit of a puzzle to uh, to figure out here. But um, canopy comes down and lock engages the canopy. So as of right now, the opening mechanism is air. We're going to switch that out to a linear actuator. Hopefully it's got enough force. Um, the lock mechanism um, right now is set up for 
um, I think an air, but uh, it's got no air strut or anything in there. So we're actually going to use a servo on that. I've got a high voltage uh, JR mini servo. So we need to figure out how to get that all set up too. So we've got a little bit of uh, messing around here with this, uh, this canopy. I'm actually uh, excited to do this because it's uh, a nice challenge. So anyways, that's progress so far. All right, guys, so I'm just playing around with the gear sequencer in the 28X. Um, so I've got a servo plugged in here, a 388 uh, high voltage GR servo. And uh, this is what we're going to use for the lock. And then we've got the uh, Accutronics uh, linear actuator there. So uh, basically, uh, right now, I guess, would, would sim and I'm just playing around with this just to see what uh, we can figure out here. So... Um, so right now the canopy would be closed, flick the switch, canopy unlocks, and canopy extends. So that's kind of what we're thinking about here. Canopy closes, and canopy locks. So direction, travel, all that stuff we have to figure out, but uh, just wanted to make sure I could get that plugged in and, uh, and set up nicely. All right, guys, so here's the mechanism that I've come up with. Uh, it's all installed and finished. So we have the servo. Uh, what I did was I just pried the, uh, the old pieces off. Uh, they came off quite easy. Those are the, uh, the air cylinder supports that came out to about here. Uh, pried those off. Um, put a put a filler in a filler piece that was the same thickness, and then put this uh, very very thin piece of plywood on top and seat it all together. Uh, then I created these two blocks. They're screwed in from the bottom side, and then they're also um, the servo screwed into the block. So nice and solid, uh, not going anywhere. All that was possible because you can undo these four screws and this the whole plate assembly comes out. Um, just a note here for you, if you are building this plane, you'll see that there's a little hole right there on one side, and there's not one on the other side. So what that's for is you can take a piece of um, piano wire, whatever thickness this is, and when you're putting this whole assembly together, the piano wire goes into this hole right there and runs all the way through. Um, then you just need to find a, a way to fasten the piano wire. I mean, you can take it and just bend each end, which is what I did with this piece when I first put it together. So um, anyways, guys, that um, mechanism is going to work good. Uh, you want to use a ball joint on there because there's a, a notch right beside this... Uh, there's a notch right underneath the ball joint right beside the, the horn uh, to allow this to work the way it is. So, and then a clevis on the other side. So fairly straightforward and uh, should work just peachy. All right, guys, so we have this air cylinder out and I can see it there compared to the linear actuator. So the thing with the linear actuator is it doesn't fit in between the pieces that the air cylinder fit in before. So what we need to do is I'm going to hopefully use my zona saw here, my pull saw, and I'm going to cut the uh, the drop down tabs off and I'm going to make two new tabs that are going to mount to the outside of the remaining pieces. So if you look at the width there, the uh, the actuator fits. If you had two more pieces coming down on the, the outside of the uh, existing ply, then it would fit no problem. So that's the goal is to basically re replicate exactly what's here, but have it... Uh, have the inside face now on the outside face, if that makes sense. So anyways, I'm gonna cut that off and then uh, have to make some new pieces, which won't be a problem. Get them glued in place and I'll show you guys the results. All right, guys, we are all done with um, 
the mounting of the linear actuator. So as you can see there, I extended those plates. This is the previous one that was that was there. Um, so I did need to get more uh, depth, uh, more drop, I guess, if you want to call it, just so there's no interference with the linear actuator up here. Obviously, larger size and um, the position is roughly the same. So, but uh, should work good. One little note here is, I guess when you're dealing with these linear actuators, there, there's a lot of movement you can get out of them, but of course you want to make sure you have some adjustments. So um, I just tapped, or I just drilled a hole in the end of the uh, the linear actuator, threaded a 440 rod in there, used the same ball joint that was on there before, but I still have a little bit of adjustment here, even though this is at its lowest point. Um, so the reason I'm saying that is just to make sure you still have some some minor adjustments on both ends when you're uh, when you're using these things. So, so that's it. So we should be able to hook up the um, canopy and everything now, and um, <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Uh, it should be uh, should be interesting. I'm excited to see what happens with this. All right, guys. So I'm just playing around with the sequencing here for the. Uh, the canopy so i've got the program set up here with a 10 second delay that's the most you can get out of a 28x radio but i think it should work good so of course before we have anything hooked up we're going to check the mechanics of this and make sure it all works um, so when i flick this switch you should see the um you'll see the lock disengage first and then we'll see the canopy open so locks disengaging canopy opens now we're going to close the canopy canopy closes lock disengages or engages sorry there we go so that's good. So obviously we can play with the timing a little bit. Like we may want to uh, want a flat dead area in the middle here, which is fine. But uh, we need everything to be hooked up to to play with that. But at least we've got things um, basically hooked up the way we want them. So very very good. Okay, guys. So I think we pretty much have everything figured out here. It's a little bit rough still because we have to figure out the hooks when the cockpit's in and everything. But the uh, the mechanics of it basically work at this point. So I'm gonna get my cameraman Cecil. Hi you're, guys. You're gonna be on YouTube, <laughs> Cecil, to uh, hold the camera for me. Okay. All right. Just remember that this is a little bit rough. So canopy comes down. And then lock engages. And then unlock, which is a servo. And then linear actuator to raise it up. Awesome. All right, guys, with that canopy done, we can start to um, work on some of the other stuff here. So I just made these rails up to go inside the fuselage in this area. So the idea is we're going to put these rails on so this plate is removable. Then we've got access to the uh, fuselage bolts and things like that. So I just cut a piece of, uh, I think this is quarter inch ply, and uh, put a nice bevel on it there, you can see. And uh, I'm going to glue those in place. So what I would do first is I was I would cut this flat piece to fit exactly where I want it to fit, and then I would uh, screw it into the uh, the side pieces, the supports, and then I would glue that all as one piece. So um, I've done both sides. That worked good. Now I'm going to work on my plate dimensions there. So on that plate, we're going to have the smoke tank mounted right here in this area. So we do have plenty of clearance up and down so we don't want to go too high with it but um, roughly around there and then on the front part of that plate we're gonna have our ECU's our turbine ECU's mounted right there so that's kind of what I'm working on right now okay guys so there's the uh, the plate that I've come up with um, that's what uh, what she looks like so two quarter inch strips put the bevel on there with my uh, my belt sander 
and sits in there quite nicely. So what I've done is I've kind of referenced the level point right now using the slot on the front there. Okay, so that'll tell you when you're your level. Uh, I've taken my pen and just marked the sidewall of the uh, the fuselage on both sides. So now what we need to do is we need to sand this area so we get good adhesion with our, our adhesive. And uh, once that's sanded, we can glue this into place and we'll be good. Once that's glued in, then we can start to focus on fitting everything else. So right now this tank's backwards, the bung's gonna point the other way, but we still have lots of clearance there and uh, works good. So initially I was thinking that maybe I'd run all the wires underneath this plate. Uh, problem with that is, um, yes, it's gonna look good, which we'll never see in this in this part of the fuselage anyways once the cockpit's in, but it becomes less serviceable, right? So if you wanna change any wires or have to chase anything, um, you know, routing all that stuff underneath there is not gonna be easy, mainly on an aircraft like this. You know, something like my Ultra Flash there, it's, it's easy to take the plate off and get into there and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is putting uh, the organizer things on the side and just running all the uh, the electrical down the side is my uh, my thought with that so anyways guys that's where we are at with um with this plate i'm gonna get that glued in and uh that'll uh take a while to cure anyways so so one of my goals guys with uh, the channel is to share information with you and help you to uh overcome problems that you might run across while building so somebody on my last video asked how i uh where i find labeled uh, ball valves. Um, I make them myself. So I just use this label maker. We've had this label maker for a long time and uh, you can print different font sizes. I cut them out with uh, scissors and uh, works really well. So that's what I use to do all my labels. And the second thing I figured I would share with you is when you've got uh, angles like this uh, to sand in the fuselage, um, old turbines used to uh, have a propane cylinder, which I've got a few of these kicking around. Um, I just get sandpaper with adhesive from the model store and uh, stick that on the, the outside of the propane cylinder. All right, guys, well, we've got a bit of a different background finally working on the front portion of the plane, but that is everything for this episode. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm glad that we got the canopy done. Um, we basically got that plate finished off and things are good. So. I know two videos ago I said that I was going to bolt the fuselage together. Now that we've got everything done that we have done, I'm going to actually bolt the fuselage together. So I'll overlay a little uh, little video clip here of the uh, little organizer pieces that I uh, also glued into the fuselage. And uh, that's going to help us organize that mass uh, craziness of cable that we've got uh, going on there. So. I uh, have spent a bit of time as well too, um, not on camera, but also kind of organizing the way things are going to be laid out. So I think we're pretty much good to go, ready to bolt the fuselage together. Um, that'll happen in the next episode, but uh, things are progressing very well. So uh, I also started a Facebook page, guys, called The Lighter Side of RC. Uh, it's listed down below. You can see it there. Um, if you If you want to go on there and like it, that's fine as well too please do so. Um, but that's it guys. If you have any questions about the video or the process or anything you've seen in the video, don't forget to list it down below. Uh, you can support the channel by giving this video a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below guys. I do appreciate it. And uh, that's everything for the video. So thank you guys for tuning in to this uh, Skymaster F-18 assembly build video series. We'll see you in the next video. Oh.